This is an example of conditionalization. We call the example Stay in Austin. The story is this. If Kelly gets her degree, she will get a good job and a good house. If she has a good job, she will live in either Palo Alto or Austin. Kelly will not live in Palo Alto. Thus, if she gets a degree, she will live in Austin. We begin by assigning these names to basic statements. D represents Kelly gets her degree. J represents Kelly will get a good job. H represents Kelly will get a good house. P represents Kelly will live in Palo Alto. And A represents Kelly will live in Austin. From the story, we extract these premises. D implies J and H. That is, if Kelly gets her degree, she will get a good job and a good house. J implies P or A. That is, if Kelly has a good job, she will live in either Palo Alto or Austin. And finally, not P, that is, Kelly will not live in Palo Alto. The conclusion to be drawn is D implies A, that is, if Kelly gets a degree, she will live in Austin. The premises of this problem are D implies J and H, J implies P or A, and not P. The conclusion is D implies A. So what strategy could we use to obtain this? First look at the conclusion, which is D implies A. Suppose we assumed the conditional premise D, and from that we were able to show A. Then we would have the conclusion that D implies A. That's the idea in conditionalization. We temporarily add premises to get implications. So, suppose we do have the premise D, we see from the first premise that we would be able to conclude J and H. In particular, then we would have J. But then, from the second premise, J implies P or A, we would have P or A. And finally, from the last premise, not P, we would have A. Since D was added as a conditional premise, we don't have the conclusion A from the original premises. What we have from the original premises is that D implies A. So, it seems as if a good place to begin this proof is with a conditional premise of D. If you would like to produce the proof on your own, you should pause this video now. The proof begins with listing the three original premises D implies J and H, J implies P or A, and not P. Now we introduce the conditional premise D on line 4. From the statement on line 1, together with this new line 4, and using modus ponens, we obtained J and H on line 5. Now simplification of line 5 results in J alone on line 6. Having obtained J and using line 2, we obtain P or A using modus ponens. Then, with line 3 and the disjunctive syllogism rule, we get A on line 8. We have obtained the statement A on line 8, having added the extra premise D on line 4. Now it is time to remove that as a temporary premise, and to do that we obtain D implies A, which is on line 9. This is called discharging of the conditionalization.